friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nonsegele Laharamsa and I'm just here to share educational information and also financial information. So if you are interested in the channel and the content, please don't forget to subscribe and also comment, tell me your opinions and ask me questions and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. So before we start, please remember that I am not a financial advisor and I am also not working in HR. This is all information based on my experience and these are all my opinions. So let's get on it. <music> question which I thought wow this is a very interesting question and I would love to answer it it's about preparing for an interview so because I've been sharing information about how I got into a graduate program what I studied and basically my journey into the corporate world so now the question was how do I prepare if I have an interview for a graduate program Specifically, if it's an IT graduate program because you have studied an IT related degree. So, yeah, let's get into it. So, when you are interviewing for a graduate program, a lot of people tend to get worried about the experience that you have. And they're going to be asking me questions about working experience or do they expect me to have a lot of experience technical experience or whatever kind of experience and the short answer is no because it is a graduate program they do know and they do understand that you are fresh out of university so what are they looking for when they interview you or what are the type of questions that they ask when they are interviewing you it's usually just to assess your character your personality and if you will fit in this organization that you have applied for and even though you don't have working experience but surely you must have learned something in varsity so they will also be asking you the things that you have learned in varsity what you have learned and just to basically see where you are in terms of understanding the role that they will be placing you in and also the personality. Will you fit in this organization? Because all organizations have their own cultures. They have their own mission and vision. And they are looking for a certain type of people to help them achieve that goal. So that's basically what they um, are trying to find out during that interview. And then some other graduate programs also have is an aptitude test. So the test that to see how you think. Um, your personality, um, how you tackle things. So these tests will be like an hour long test that um, is separated into different um, segments or sections where they will maybe give you an English test just to see your comprehension skills. Can you read and understand? Then they will give you some mathematics skills just to see basics of maths. Where are you in terms of mathematics? It's nothing too hard or too difficult and then they usually give you patterns and shapes just to see how you think are you able to identify patterns are you able to predict what's going to happen based on what they give you so these tests are just to also see your personality the type of person you are your strengths and your weaknesses your thought process when you tackle something you something that's new to you like how do you think about it how do you go about doing it and they also ask you questions like in terms of teamwork when you're working in a team what type of a person are you what role do you usually take in that team so also to assess i've sort of prepared like a list of questions that they usually um ask in a graduate program uh, interview and hopefully these questions will help you prepare for that interview and you get that job so i have a list of questions that they usually ask you and we'll just talk through them so the first question of course is always the tell tell us about yourself who are you so in this question they just want you to explain your educational background where you grew up, um, your high school, and then in varsity, what you did, what did you study, were you involved in any 
societies just to know who you are and that's basically what it is it's not a trick question it's just to know the type of person you are um what have you studied and also maybe what do you want to achieve and then the second question is why do you want to work here so this question is important because here you need to show that you have done research about that particular company that you apply to because they don't just want to pick somebody who's not invested so have you done research about that company and also sell yourself this is a question for you to sell yourself show your strengths show um what you are capable of so when they ask why do you want us to hire you tell them maybe you went through their vision um, and mission statement and you realize it suits you because you have certain skills that they are looking for so you know incorporate what you have researched and who you are to basically sell yourself and show them that you are invested and you really are the correct candidate for that position and then how do you demonstrate leadership in varsity so they will ask you this question to see are you a leader because in all organizations even though you are not applying for a leadership role but they want people who will be leaders they want people who will take that organization to the next step so they asking you this question to see if you are in a team what role do you play do you take leadership and it's not only based on teamwork that you've done it could be in a society that you are part in that they made you chairperson for that specific society so it shows that you have the ability to lead people it shows you you have the ability to speak to people to convey your message because when you're working in the IT industry you'll be working with a lot of people you'll be working in groups so are you able to communicate with people and get your point across that's what they want to see and will you take this organization to the next step and then the next uh is tell us what role you play in a team so this will usually be a scenario based question to say have you done teamwork before and what role um have you played and of course in varsity you do a lot of group work assignments so you will take that um experience that you have and tell them what role you play but of course you need to show that you are a team player you are not aggressive you were not um violent in that group so if there were any bad situations in the group always come up with a positive point of view to say yes maybe we had conflict but i came um to the team very calmly and i told them guys let's push or whatever but always show that as a team you always play the role of a leader and if you're not a leader you are always able to communicate calmly with people you are always um there to remind people of what the um aim of that um team is of of that group assignment is so it wants to show your personality when you are working with people because we don't want people who will fight and cause arguments and cause tension so that's why they want to see in a team because you will definitely work in a team how will you be well, like what type of a person will you be in that team will you cause any conflict will you cause any negative vibes so you don't want to um, do that so always bring up the positives that even though maybe i wasn't chosen to be the team leader but I was always on time. Um, I always sent out um, minutes. I always reminded people that we can do this. You know, the time is near for the assignment due date, so let's push. So it's just to always have a positive perspective, even if you are not a leader in that team. And then any experience where team didn't perform well, what did you do? And of course, this all links back to that previous question. So. In a team, we all know we've all worked in group assignments where it turns out to be a disaster because your team members let you down. So in that team, your team members let you down. What do you do? So it's very important for you to not come up and say, you know what, I went to the lecture and I told them that my team members are horrible and I'm going to do this by myself. 
like even if you did that we don't want to know or the organization doesn't want to know they want to see that you are a team player did you um take time to try and encourage your team members to say you know let's do this did you take time to talk to your team members and find out what's wrong? Because often you work with different people from different backgrounds. Did you take time to see that maybe this person is going through something personal? Can I assist them or can I take over their piece of work for that short period of time? Did you do means to make sure that your team ended up achieving its end goal and you were not the star you don't want to be the star even if you were but you don't want to like in a negative way to say i took over the whole team and i carried the team no because that's not how it works in real life and you don't want to come through as a nasty self-centered person so whenever you answer that question say yes um, we did have tough times in the team certain team members were not playing their part so i did try to communicate with them um schedule some time one and one to understand what their problem is and then if those team members didn't come through then i went to a senior maybe you went to the lecturer or your supervisor or whoever and you asked them for advice on how to handle this matter you see that question shows that you did try to do something and you didn't just go out of your way to show people that you don't care you can do it on your own and then the other one is where do you see yourself in five years so this question can be a bit tricky because you want to show the people who will be hiring you that you are invested in their organization you are here for the long run so you don't want to say i'm just here for one year graduate program then at the end i want to start my own business so i'm just leaving you because i just want work experience no you need to show that you are invested so you see yourself as a specialist you see yourself having grown in that business analyst role or systems analyst role or whatever role you are applying um, for and you see yourself maybe in a leadership position helping other people in the organization grow and helping the organization realize its its goals or um, achievements or whatever so here is to they want to see what are you thinking are you gonna drop us because obviously when we are um, when the organization is looking for someone they are not looking for someone just for now they want somebody who's going to be there help them out with their projects there is a need that's why they are doing this they also need someone so they don't want to hire someone who's going to be here six months then now they must go through this whole process again even if it's not through the graduate program but through another recruitment um, process now looking for someone else so it's also to see your goals and do you like your own personal goals do they match the goals of the organization yes you might want to open your own business in five years or four years time but then they also wonder will that impact our work or she starts slacking now on our work um when she wants to uh build her own business so you need to find a balance so if you say uh in five years time i want to see myself as a senior but i also want to see myself having my own business it's for you then to quickly reassure them to say but my business will work on weekends where during the week i only focus on this team and my career and then on the weekends that's when i'll push my own personal business so they want to see somebody who's going to grow also i don't want someone who's going to be there like i want to just be a business analyst and then you know have dreams have goals and show them but remember it should always be part of that organization it should always you being growing in that organization and helping the organization grow and then how do you handle conflict so again this is part of the teamwork and you might think these questions like they sound the same why are they asking me the same thing over and over again but it's a tactic that they use because they want to see how truthful you will be because maybe first time you remember that you've practiced and you answer 
um, the teamwork question correctly. Then second time you start to slip, slip up. And then now when they ask you, how do you handle conflict? Because maybe now you're comfortable in the interview, they've made you feel comfortable. Now your real personality comes out and you say, you know what? When I'm faced with conflict, I go straight to that person and I tell them who I am. You know, obviously we don't want that. The organization doesn't want that. So always don't think it's a trick question. Like why are they asking me the same question in different ways? They just try to see how will you be working in a team? Because like I said, when you work in corporate, you work in a lot of teams of different people on different projects. So it's very important to get somebody who is a team player, who won't let the team down, who won't cause conflict, and who will also play their part. So when they ask you how do you handle conflict, just remember it's for you to say, I go to that person on a one-on-one, -on -one, maybe approach them, when they are karma, if you guys maybe got into an argument and you apologize for your part and then you maybe find out if there was something you did that was wrong or is the person going through something personally or in their career and they just lashed out because we are human. So you try to find what the problem is and try to resolve it but calmly. And then if it doesn't work, then you try to find a mediator to come assist you guys, um, handle this conflict, and then you take it from there. So remember with all the teamwork questions, with all the personality questions, with all the conflict questions, it's for them to see who you are. Like, we don't want an animal in our team. We don't want someone who's going to cause conflict in our team. And then they tend to ask you about your strengths and your weaknesses. So... A lot of people will say, I don't have any weaknesses. I'm a shining star. Everything I do, I do well. Like, we all have weaknesses. So, please, don't lie. Your strengths, again, when you say your strengths, always remember you're working in a team. So, your strengths need to, I can communicate well. Because you'll be communicating with other people. I'm a good listener. Because you have to listen to other people when you're working in a team. And then your weaknesses can be, I tend to overwork myself. So you want to take up something positive and turn it into something negative. Because we don't really want bad, bad weaknesses. But, you know, play around with it. So you can say, I tend to overwork myself. And this is a weakness because I realize I need to balance myself so that I'm not stressed and I'm not tired. That at the beginning of each and every day, I know I am putting in 100% of who I really am, you know. So you took something that was positive because we do want people or organizations want people who are hard workers. But you made it into a weakness. And then you also showed how you are overcoming your weakness. So yeah, that's how um, you play around with the strengths and the weakness. And then even though you don't have any work experience, they will ask you technical questions because like I said in the beginning of the video, you need to have learned something from varsity. You cannot have spent three, four, five years in varsity and have not learned anything. So they will ask you technical questions, especially in the IT industry. So it will be if you are applying for... Um, analyst position the types of documents they use so do you know what a brs is an frs an srs um do you know what the different is the difference is between these documents have you written one and then they will if you say yes i know the difference and you explain yes i've written one then they'll say okay give us an overview of how that document looks like so then you'll have to explain that on um, for an example, a BRS. So a BRS has a summary and then table of contents, and then it will have the purpose of the project, why we are doing the project, the scope of the project. Then you'll have your processes, your as is and your to be processes, then your requirements, and 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 so they need to because you can say yes, we can all say yes, I've done it, but so when they ask you, give us an overview, it's just to see, have you really done it? 
and yes maybe you like in varsity um, wrote the document in a different format or in a different way but the most important aspects of that document are there and it also shows that yes you did it in varsity but it means you know how to do it you know the basics of what the document is and then other technical questions they will ask you for unified marking languages so those diagrams because you do use those diagrams so they will ask you do you know what uml is um have you done any uml diagrams and give us examples of the uml diagrams then you'll give them i've done a use case i've done a sequence diagram activity diagram then they'll maybe say okay take us through an activity diagram how does it look like then you will just explain an activity diagram it has this it has this just so that again it's for them to see that you have really done it even though maybe in varsity you did it in a different way but you know the basics of what is required in that specific diagram because in real life you do use those diagrams and then can you code so i used to get nervous when i was asked this question because i was not a good coder in varsity and it it just shocked me like why are they asking me about coding when i'm applying for a business analyst i specifically applied for a business analyst role because i don't want to code so why are you asking me about coding but as a da you will work with developers you will have to have an understanding of the coding language so whether it's just reading the code just so you can follow that okay this is the code because sometimes a developer can um maybe they come through a problem and they get stuck somewhere and you as the ba need to assist them so they will say the business analyst come help us we are stuck every time we do this we get an error can you help us or they just take you through it then you just need to be able to follow through because and again you don't want developers to lie to you what if this developer lies to you and says you know i can't code this it's impossible so if you have a bit of coding background you can say uh no it's not i may not know how to code fully but i definitely know that this is possible and when the um, developer asks you, you can be there when he explains his problems, he'll obviously show you. Then you can read through the code and say, oh, okay, okay, I get this. Oh, okay, I see what you were trying to do. Maybe let's try do this. So even though you are not telling the developer in a coding language, like um, this is how you should um, develop it. But when you explain to them, then you guys are both not confused in terms of oh, what is he developing and you are just explaining something else and the developer is also like what is this girl saying so you guys you need background of coding so you can understand the developer's world so don't get shocked or flustered when they ask you this question and they'll often ask what language can you code in so just tell them the language that you learn because you do learn coding in varsity and you just tell them this is the language that i've learned then how good are you you can tell them oh i'm a six seven eight you know because you do know the basics so you should be above five because you did learn it in varsity you may not be 10 out of 10 but i'm sure you can be a six or a seven and again they're not gonna whip up code and say okay code for us it's just for them to see can you talk to the developers will you be able to interact with them without there being any confusion and then the last question it usually is a scenario based question so they will say hmm, um if you have a client and the client wants to build a car how will you go about um writing the requirements for this or what is the process you will follow if um, our client wants to build a car so this is for them to see your thought process in a real life situation the type of questions you are asked because as a ba you need to ask a lot of questions not only as a ba as somebody working in the it industry you need to ask a lot of questions to understand what are we trying to achieve 
So even as a systems analyst, when the business analyst gives you their document, you need to understand what am I analyzing? What systems do I need to analyze? What is the aim of this? Even as a developer, what are you developing? What is the program or the software supposed to do? You know, those type of questions. So that's what they want to see. Can you get information out of people? The tactics you will use to get that information, will you be asking the right questions? So now you ask, um, they tell you to build a car and you are saying, okay, you ask all the questions and you forget to ask the question about the engine. I mean, you know, they will say how, but what about the engine? Because it's an important part of the car. Or what about the tires? So you also need to ask, is this car moving? Because you can say, yes, I don't think I needed an engine because this car is not moving. So is this car going somewhere? Is it a big car? Is it a small car? Uh, more like, it, does it need a lot of passengers? Is it like a, a, a bus? Like, what type of vehicle is this? Yes, you're saying a car, is it a red car, a blue car? Does it need a specific color for what reason? So they just want to see how you will be thinking and, yeah, your thought process of how you'll be doing everything. I really hope this has helped. Please do comment below, ask me more questions. Um, tell me your feedback if you used this before going to an interview. Did it help? Did you help you prepare? Did it calm your nerves? And yeah, thank you guys. Bye.